Welcome to Water, the Study of Martial Arts. I'm Robin Black. Uh, today we're going to look at water. What did I what did I call it? Innovation, spinning shit, and exploiting beliefs. All right. Normally I would never title something first, uh, but I thought by titling it it would direct me. My my uh, my mic is moving, but no big deal. This is life. You must adapt. Um, I thought it would direct me. I'm going to pick it up. So please humor me. I thought it would direct me because I was thinking about some things, some aspects of um, of why this all started with why we're seeing so much spinning shit, right? Now, we could, yeah, I, I scroll down all, Mark, how much fucking paper is everywhere? <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> there... There are those who think I'm insane. Um, I don't think that is so. Do you think you, I'm crazy, Mark? In a good sense. Like yeah. A, a smart I, boy. I, I don't <laughs> think I'm insane. I interact with the world fairly well. I'm fairly successful walking out in the world. I get along with people. My relationships are good. Like Generally, I think I'm sane. But when you look at the insane scrawlings of my mind, when it comes to the desire to understand this, it does look a little crazy. Yeah, well, I was going to say, you... you channel your obsessiveness in a positive way yeah i think that would probably be and upset again this is a topic of water it is about martial arts but obsession and compulsion ocd add we label all these things but these and maybe some of them have popped up out of nowhere but a lot of these tendencies have always been there some of them took it took the human race to the moon or fucking made the greatest champions, broke world records, and so forth. Um, but yes, I think if you're fortunate, and I consider myself very fortunate, these, I have, as Mark so eloquently put it, I have channeled this type of obsession into something that gives me great joy, and I have the good fortune of sharing it with people. But, um, but yeah, it, it gets a little fucking nuts. <laughs> um, so... Innovation, spinning shit, and, ex and exploiting belief systems. So we were looking at, uh, I was, people have been asking me, why are we suddenly seeing spinning shit? Spinning shit don't work. And uh, uh, if you're listening to the whole podcast, I, I said thank you to Joe Rogan for pointing out, uh, using one of my breakdowns as an example to discuss a sidekick. People also say, have said for years, sidekicks don't work. Um, and if you pinpoint any of these moments in time, you think it's about the thing. You think it's, oh my God, people are wrong about sidekicks. Or, holy shit, uh, spinning shit, well, it works now, it didn't work before. Or, but if you really are contextualizing this, and this is, again, I'm always looking for something that we can take to, to everything in life. It's, we're in the middle of one, your whole life, martial arts, relationship, and whatever, you, it, the whole everything is one long, continuously flowing thing. And it, looking at any moment of it, it feels unique or, or uh, remarkable in some way, and it may be. But if you contextualize it, you see this is quite normal. And holy shit, spinning shit don't work, but now it works. Or man, sidekicks, people don't, uh, now they work. Or front, and I've used, I've, I've gone over this many times, but I will continue to because it isn't about side kicks or front kicks or, or arm in guillotines or anything. This is about life, right? This is about life. This is about our lives, about everything. But spinning shit don't work. People are still arguing about side kicks. We've seen plenty of side kicks land. And then I'll get to this in a second. I was going to talk about Stephen Thompson, but that's part of the greater picture too. They said front kicks don't land. And then Anderson Silva, who did he kick? Vitor? Yep. Kick Vitor in the face. And then double snap kicks. <laughs> That would never work. And then Lyoto took that front kick and added a fake kick to propel him. Of course, that would work because that worked. And that's just an extension of that. They said arm and guillotines will never work. They said you can't cross your legs when you do an arm bar. They said a fucking lot of stuff. It's been said since the beginning of time. And it will continue to be said because this is how we are. We look to structure things into sets of rules. We look to structure things into make sense of the world around us. It's why we have what we have as a culture because we try to make sense of what we have. But right this minute is no big fucking deal in the context of the whole world forever. 
It's just this second. It is a part of an ongoing flow of things. So sidekicks don't work. Oh my God, they do work. Don't be surprised. This is normal. And then it will be normal. Whatever they say you can't do. What 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 do people still what would people still say doesn't work in MMA? I mean, Aikido doesn't work in MMA. Yeah. I know that people are gonna think I'm crazy right now, but I will tell you, Aikido will work in MMA, if not now, at some point in the future. Okay? Don't be mad at me. You don't have to fucking tell Joe on me <laughs> because he's not saying Aikido doesn't work either. He's just saying that the extreme examples of these bullshit artists, what's his hashtag? Something uh, fake shit like oh, a, McDojo. McDojo or McDojo whatever. There's bullsh- lots of them out there. Bullshito. Bullshito, yeah. People are often saying, look, this doesn't work. And of course, there is bullshit. The old master who says, punch me and you can't hit me. And then people are punching around him. And another guy's like, Bam, bam, bam. Which made that one made me feel bad. Yeah. It was just some little old guy trapped in his fucking bullshit bubble that he did. Nobody had ever snapped for him. You don't have to punch him in the face. For no one who's ever seen it, it's an old master sitting there and his students just punched around him for years until a guy punched him out. It's kind of hard to watch. Yeah. But everything will work. And that is a part of what we're talking about today. So now, but it is the path of these things, the flow, the, the life cycle of beliefs is how and why this works. The life cycle of adaptation, of embracing something as truth is why this all works, okay? And it's just a nebulous idea, but I'm not bullshitting you. I'm not fucking bullshitting you. I'm, I'm taking what we've seen in a continuous path and I'm finding the pattern in that path, okay? And the great, and you know, the beauty of studying something, dedicating your life to the study of something, is you see patterns in things. And at first, you see patterns in the fight itself. Oh my God, if he keeps throwing a leg kick, that guy's going to block it and hit him. And that pattern becomes part of how the fight goes. Then you see a pattern, well, this guy always does this. So if somebody, but the true pattern is in the context of, of anything, is in the context of the largest sample size possible. And what we have the good fortune of now is when would the first videos of boxing, when, when did film start? Like 20s, 30s, what are we talking about? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. sure either. But whenever that was, I mean, it's certainly before the 40s, 20s or 30s, when we've got footage of, of old school boxers, uh, do you want to Google uh, f- earliest film boxer? Mm-hmm. From that day to today, let's say that's 1930. That is still only 88 years, but 88 years is a lot longer than a 15-minute fight or three fights in a year, which would be maybe 45 minutes or less. Around the late 1800s. Late 1800s. 1897. 1897. <laughs> and this has to be definitely, like obviously, yeah. well before Queensbury rules. Yeah. So, so like let's say we've got fights. <laughs> nine, 1910 we start to be able to see, and you look back at it. And so what, so what was, and again, innovation, spinning shit, and exploiting belief. So what was going on here? You know? So this is, oh man, I got some good shit. I don't know if I have it here. Uh, I brought it here. Um, My father-in-law gave me for Christmas, and it should be in this room of nonsense, gave me a bunch of old stuff, like judo for, I see something here. Please excuse me. Mark, maybe we'll edit this. Maybe he won't. Oh, here's some. Uh, I love this kind of shit. I love this kind of shit. So, no, he didn't need to edit that. Just leave that. That's Okay. Special judo self-defense course. Can you read that, Mark? Yep. Yeah. What is it? Copyright. Can you, can you uh, read the copyright? It's... Uh, Copyright 1959. 1959. Okay. Now, he also sent me, gave me a few other ones because they're funny. <laughs> this one's, I believe, similar time, 1959. Joe Weeders, How to Develop a He Man Personality. <laughs> right? Right? So, now, why am I showing you? Then you get into some of this stuff, some really old inside kung fu magazines. You get in, if you find this stuff, oh, this is good. This one's really good. 1960, I believe. Now, in this one, 
Boxing Illustrated, wrestling news. So they start to transition over. There have been periods of time where wrestling, pro wrestling, was real. They would just go to the town and they'd mm-hmm. wrestle. And eventually it got so boring, the guys were better, that they eventually started letting the local guy win. And then pro wrestling kind of began. Right. To, right? And it's more complex than that. I'm not a wrestling historian, but that is the gist of it. But so what are these things? This, of course, is hilarious. I haven't read this one yet. But you know why this won't make sense? And we'll look at it now and you'll be like, oh, my God, that's fucking misogynistic. Or that would never work. Or you'd get slapped or whatever. Because this is behavior built on behavior, beliefs built on beliefs, expectations. Be, you know, if a man acted a way and a woman behaved a certain way and then a man behaved a certain way and whatever, they were exposed to what they were exposed on TV. People started believing this is how you should act. Now, that, that one's an extreme example. But of course, when that works, this is, these are the truths in 1959. You look at this now, you go back and you look at some of these, the, the beauty of, of them, before I explain how it uh, fits with, the, with um, the thesis, the beauty sometimes is you look and you go, holy fuck, nobody does this anymore. Well, now you just found some gold. Because what does it mean if nobody does this anymore? It means nobody's having it done to them, which means they have no practice defending it. And they're not expecting it. We just found some fucking gold. But better than that, and more relevant to spinning shit, innovation, exploiting beliefs, is certain things in the modern times have never been done or rarely done. So how does it work? Spinning shit doesn't work, so we don't do it. But we'll we'll take something simpler. Front kicks. Uh, Front kicks don't work, so no one does them. Why would you do them? They don't work. Right? They don't work, so we won't do them. Since we don't do them, of course they don't work. All, that's a belief. That is a belief. Spinning kicks don't suddenly work. The belief that spinning kicks don't work becomes denounced by someone. In that case, it was Anderson Silva. And who claimed? Steven Seagal claimed fucking... That was a joke, though. Oh, for the Leoto? Yeah. Leoto and, I think, Anderson. Yeah, and, and, of course, I, they were just... They were working, Steve. Uh, <laughs> who I, I don't mean to be rude, but was one of the, the least likable humans I've ever met. And I'm, if you know me, I'm a pretty positive guy. Universally. Like, there's two yeah. people that yeah. everyone regards as a douche, which yeah. is Steven Seagal and Gene Simmons. Yeah. <laughs> pretty similar. Pretty similar. Uh, and they fight about as well as each other. Oh, no, you did it, Robin Black. <laughs> I don't know. Gene, no. Steve would, would tend to beat up Gene. I'm quite quite certain of that and me probably i mean it's like it's huge you know although um anyways so front kicks don't work so no one does them because they don't work why the fuck would you do something if it didn't work and then you somebody comes along and they just don't accept that belief coach fighter or they just they maybe don't accept it because after a lifetime of throwing front kicks in karate and it's not we'll Sorry to, to go off on a side thought, but we'll often say, oh, man, you know, now point fighting is coming to something. or now. It isn't the techniques. No, Stephen Thompson didn't bring any new techniques. These techniques exist. He brought a belief in those techniques. He brought, and why does he have a belief in those techniques? Because they fucking worked for him his whole life. And just because you say, well, they, don't, they won't work in, in MMA, he's like, MMA isn't some magical place where fucking sidekicks don't work. It's an environment of fighting. And then somebody will then say, well, they don't work because you'll get taken down. The spirit of martial arts is, then I must find an answer for that problem. Not, okay, don't do them ever. (laughs) Don't do them. They don't work. I'll get taken down. The spirit of martial arts is, find the answer to the problem. That is what martial arts is. That's what everything is. That's how we've done everything in life. And sometimes we found the wrong answer for a long time. And then to find the right answer is to go, you know, and I'm, again, I'm I'm moving away from martial arts here and into life. Um, You know, sometimes we think we have the right answer. It's work harder or, you know, it is sell my business or whatever it is. And you you keep trying to find the answer and maybe the answer was somewhere back. You got to take some steps back, but that's okay. That's part of life. But so this is why these cycles happen. There is nothing remarkable about the sidekick. And I mean that in a wonderful way. I don't mean it's 
not special. It is equally as special as all other choices of movements. There's nothing remarkable about a low kick or a fucking punch or blocking like this or grabbing somebody or choking someone. It's all just moving your body in a moment, a choice moment, where it will give you some benefit in the context of a fight. That's it. That's fighting. I'm done. I'm done. We never have to talk again. That's all it is. All of this other bullshit is just shit we created. And, and the, the, the best, the best know this ultimately. So what does that mean? How do I become a great fighter? I just do whatever I want. No, I'll get killed. This is the ultimate. What I'm, what I'm saying now is the ultimate. I don't want to say ultimate truth. It is, it is the being of what it is. We're moving our body in such a way that gives me a benefit to the short or the long term of, of a fight. That's all. That's all. All this other stuff is created so that we can teach you to get to this point that you don't have to worry about any of those rules anymore. There are some truths in these things. Gravity is real. If I, if I take neur neurological damage, I won't behave as well. There's truths. You know, I won't be able to, to freely do what I, if I sustain an injury or, or part of my body is, is stopped, this will affect the way I fight. These are truths. But always throw a right hand after a jab is fucking bullshit. And nobody thinks that one, but once upon a time they did. And that takes me back to all these cool things. You look back, what was this? This was the truth, baby. This is how you fucking fight. This is the truth until it isn't. If this is the truth that you must fight this way, then later when somebody does something different, if Mark, you and I stand here and fight like this for a year and then you do something different. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. It's all new, right? So why did this come up? Not because that's the best either, because we go ahead to 2035 and people will not be standing how they stand now. With, of that, I can tell you with certainty. What was my point of this and even, even fucking nonsense like this, which is interesting. It's historically interesting. What was, what was my point of this? And, and I think this is maybe the gist. If you come away with nothing here, if all you did was get high and listen to Robin Ravel on, bless you. Thank you. Fuck. It's a pleasure. But if you come away with only one thing, please let it be this. This is not some non nonsense created by some stupid people a long time ago. This is not a bunch of nonsense. Can you believe how stupid these people were? Any more than everything we believe is compared to 2030 or 20 fucking 21. Does that make sense, Mark? Yeah. Sure. Is there any difference when we look at this? Actually, what year is this? This one might be newer. April 1984. Is there any difference in the, the, the information in here and how it becomes incorrect than the information of today? What John Jones does, what somebody will look in 2028 and go, holy fuck, can you believe he still fought that way back then? We are not right now and it was wrong before. We don't have it all figured out now, not like those savages from 50 years ago. We are in another state of that exact process of not knowing what the fuck we're talking about. We just do our best with the information that we have available, which is not nearly as much as we think. That's everything. If you come away with only one thing, come away with that. Don't look. My friend David Mullins went and watched some old videos. Uh, he and his wife, when they had their daughter, they went to, uh, what do you call those videos? What, um, Mark's uh, changed something. What did you click? Oh, we just had a little camera issue, but oh. you can keep going. Yeah, is everything yeah, good, yeah, though? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, and if there's a problem, and we, if you missed anything on the camera, well, sorry. We're here now. Uh, if you are on a uh, podcast, well, you didn't miss anything, I don't think. But um, my friend David Mullins, who we've done sports psychology um, consulting type uh, talk before, he and his wife were having a baby, and they watched these old videos about, about having a baby right? How to, you know, breathe and what to do. And the, the people doing the instructions said to them, said to them, this is juice. I give up alcohol, by the way. It was about 100 days ago now. 
98 days ago. It's weird. Um, but I like coffee. Give up marijuana, too. Not that I ever smoked a lot of marijuana, but... And it's legal now, too. But it's just all open up here. <laughs> but uh, uh, they looked at that video, and they were like, God. And a lot of people in the class were like, man, people didn't know anything then. We don't know much now. Certainly not in the context of what we're going to know. And that's everything here. So if... 15 or 20 weeks ago, people were like spinning elbows. To, uh, sorry, this reminded me. This takes me to the process of how, it work, how this uh, process normally happens. First, we say it doesn't work. You can't move this way. You can't punch this way. You can't kick this way. You can't uh, choke this way. You can't do this thing. So we all denounce it. It doesn't work. A few people believe it. Where they play around with it, doesn't quite work. People are like, see, I told you so. You can't do that. Then something happens, right? Edson Barbosa landed the first spinning kick. Yeah, and uh, Terry Adam. Yeah, and Terry Adam. And then um, John McDessie landed a spinning back fist. Maybe there was already one. We say, well, you can't do that. But there's the odd. A lot of us will say fluke. A lot of us will say chance. Or a lot of us will say, yeah, but he, then the next level is, yeah, well, he can do that. But it doesn't work. Dominic Cruz was a fucking champion of the world, moving a particular way. And we all pointed and said, well, that's weird, but that's dumb. Not like, holy fuck, that's a way to fight that most of us don't do or study or try or understand. Because that's him. He's odd. Then we get to the point that it's like, well, that'll work occasionally. And then the floodgates open and everyone does it. Why do you, on my Instagram page, I got like, 15 spinning knockouts in the last four months. Why are they all there all of a sudden? Because many people like me and you are talking about them. And we're seeing them. And imagine if we're seeing them and you're a fighter. You watch every fight. You're like, holy fuck, I think I just saw a spinning elbow. And then three weeks later, you saw another one. And then pretty soon it's normal. Now everybody's doing them in the gym. If we're all doing them in the gym, we start to learn really quickly. We deep dive into it. It becomes the truth. This does work. And now there it is. Everything goes like that over and over again. And then it will slowly work a little less because it'll be less fresh. It'll be less new. It'll be less rare. We like, all start to train it. Like what you were talking about before with the Superman jab. Yeah, we were talking about the Superman punch before. And uh, somebody's like, why doesn't that work? And I, I, I generalized it and said it's too obvious of a feint. And it's a single feint. But it isn't the single feint. That is a part of it. Uh, we are now, many of us are thinking in terms of multiple feints. And we have to draw you down a long road of following our whole sentence before we can change a single word to trick you. We used to be able to go pick a card, any card, any card, punch. <laughs> you know, here, I'm here I kicked you. Oh, the next kick's coming. You got it? Bink. Right? Um, it doesn't work that way anymore. You're not falling for it. How many fucking Superman punches do you have to get hit with in training until they don't work? Over time, you're like, guy lands it, guy lands it, guy lands it. Your brain already knows one of the possible things of this kick is a Superman punch. It becomes normal. It becomes expected. It becomes anticipated. And it's too broad. This to this. This is too big. Once upon a time at work, it's like, holy fuck, I thought that guy was kicking me. And it turned out he was punching me. Weird. New. Came out of nowhere. I've never seen it. Now, if you fucking get caught with a Superman punch and you've got two or three amateur fights, I'd be shocked. You just had a brain fart, but it doesn't work the way it once worked, but it will. All we got to do is not do it for five or six years and it's going to work. Well, not do it in training. I was going to say, if you're not, it'll live on forever in shitty action movie sequences. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, you see that everywhere. Now. everywhere. Yeah, who, there was one I just saw the other day and he stepped off a wall to do it. Uh, it's so obvious now, yeah, that even like once upon a time it would be some weird, crazy martial arts move. Yeah. Now, like, you know. Now it's a standard. Like, it's it a has sta to be in there. That's an action <laughs> movie standard because everyone gets it. Oh, cool. And once you get to that point, that shit don't work anymore. Why do you think these giant hooks work in action movies? Because we were trained to see them. If we can see them, they work. If we can, they work for our eyes, but they don't work in reality. Right? Then later, action movies start becoming s subtle and inside like um, uh, the Born Identity. That was yeah. cool the first time. That looked real. It was short little elbows and, you know, instead of wide, crazy, you know, swinging with your hands down, head snapping back. Because that doesn't happen much anymore. Although, you can still see that on YouTube when people don't know how to fight. 
you see it. But real fighting doesn't work that way. But we start to see things. They become a normal part of it. And as they become a normal part of it, they become a normal part of the inventory of what your brain is expecting or seeing as a possibility. And so the brain of the fighter, you are my opponent. My brain is chunked all of the possible things. And now when I see a shoulder a particular way, this happens and then that happens. Dwayne Ludwig broke down. But did I make this more confusing or did I make it? Have I made sense here? And I, I do ask myself that more and more now over time because I know what I mean, but my job isn't to say the things that I know. My job is to find ways of, of making it understandable to people who specialize their work and knowledge and, and information in other areas of life, right? Is this making sense, Mark? Yeah, essentially what you're saying is like the more you become desensitized to something in the training room, the less effective it will be on game night. So, yeah, yeah. You know, when you show me that, it's... And, and the other, in that, advance right? of that is, the more that we believe something doesn't work, exactly. then we don't down. train it because none of our opponents, none of our training partners think it works. And it doesn't really exist in our brain. And all of a sudden, it comes out of nowhere and it hits. We, we, all, we the larger uh, population, denounce it as a fluke or it works only for that individual for a long time. Until we see more, then it becomes normal. Once it's normal... And everybody in the gym is doing it. Everybody in the gym is comfortable with it. You start seeing it in fights everywhere. And when that happens for too long, everybody's doing it. It works. It becomes less effective because you've taught your training partners to see it, identify it, catalog it, and expect it and react to it. And then it works less. The low leg kick, don't expect it's calf kick. Don't fucking expect that to be a thing by mid, you know, mid-2019. So I have a question then. Who, yep. Whose job is it to, quote unquote, reintroduce it? Uh, is it, say, the fighter picking up the skill or is it the coach saying, you know, I think we can exploit this now in this age? It's a good question. And it's both. And it often happens. It, so uh, and you see it acutely in. And that's why I'm such right now. And because these things also flip flop back and forth and change as we see life change like that R right now i'm such a big fan of really close fighter coach relationships because you come in um uh who's uh, who fought in his debut against tony ferguson and uh, had a uh, groovy lando. lando so i got to see a, a touch just as an observer of groovy lando and brandon gibson Groovy was being super creative, which inspired his coach. And then they got fucking crazy creative. And then they're doing all kinds of stuff. And they're, they're the artistic, the artist in both of them came out. And they fucking, I'm sure it was a joyful experience. And then Lando lost a fight or two. And I was talking to Brandon somewhere in this process, and he said, we just suddenly woke up and we're like, holy fuck, we're going so far down this road. We got to get fit, get strong, uh, take some shots, spar, you know, uh, and, and add a little bit of some of the root back because it goes so far in that direction. But it was the two of them exciting each other. A somewhat conservative fighter with a creative coach is a beautiful thing. Coach has to push him to try it, got to get him going. But once it starts working, that fighter owns it. A super creative fighter with a conservative coach, if the relationship is good, can also be a beautiful thing. A coach is like going, that's fine and good, but we don't want to fucking get knocked out. Keep your hands up or put, move your feet or don't forget your fundamentals. And he just hammers home those fundamentals. It's when they both go too far one way or too far the other way, but even that can be good. Brandon told me about how they went too far down creative, and you know, but maybe right on the other side of a couple losses is innovation in ways you couldn't even comprehend. Sometimes the way to get there is through shit, but who knows? The, on the other hand, some of the most fundamentally sound fighters, I mean, one of the things, why don't we move to, uh, uh, as far as this... Um, the YouTube uh, um, little video of enjoy the or of uh, water. I want to wrap it up right now, but I want to return to this. This is at the root of where my passion for watching martial arts lies. I want to wrap it up and say, if you're watching this by itself, please move now to the T.J. Dillashaw uh, clip.